Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Create. My name is Volta Bates and on this episode I will show you the basics on how to set up lens flare animations with the tools available on Clips to the Paint. So, let's begin. So what I want to do is to add a lens flare animation to this night scene I drew in advance. We know that the only strong source of light comes from the motorcycle's headlight. So we need to add a flare coming out from this point. And to do that, we need to understand how lens flares work. Lens flares are called that way because, obviously, as the name suggests, they are visible on the lens of the camera. And they appear in the presence of a strong source of light. And usually two things happen. First, a portion of the light scatters, and this creates a glare. And this glare washes out the entire image. But the second thing that happens is that there's a portion of the light that bounces from the lens components, making them reflect on the glass. And that is the reason why lens flares come in so many different shapes. Because it depends on the lens diaphragm. They can be circular, hexagonal, or any shape for that matter. Because other components also get reflected. So the first thing we need to do is to draw the main streaks of light coming out from the light source. And these are usually diamond shape. So for this I created a new layer, used the pencil tool, and click on it while I was holding shift to create a straight line. And from there I complete the diamond shape. These are often very thin lines, so drawing them can be kind of finicky for some people, at least depending on the resolution. So if you wanted to make it more refined, you can click on the layer, click on filter, drawing line, and adjust line width. And this will allow you to narrow or thicken the lines however you want it. And it looks good for now, but now we need to add a glow effect. And to do this, we duplicate this layer, change the layer blending mode to glow and then we add a blur filter and I recommend doing this to the original layer to a lesser degree that way it will look a little bit more natural and after that I copy these layers and press ctrl T to be able to scale them and rotate them and now we know that if we have multiple streaks of light converging into a single point that area should be brighter so I created a new layer and set the blending mode to glow and I paint in that area so it looks a little bit more glowy. This looks fine, but you can be creative with the shape of this flare, so let me show you one that I did with a similar method. And now that we have our main element for the center of the lens flare, we need to add the rest of the pieces, those made of the reflections of the elements inside of the lens. The ones from the diaphragm are coming from a set of circles or holes that are concentrical, so, in theory, they all should be aligned and reflected along a single line. So, what I will do is to draw a line in a new layer. And then, I'm going to create circles along this line. And just remember to draw them all in different layers and to set the blending mode to glow. I drew a lot of circles because our shot here is very, very flat. And for that to make any sense, it will have to be filmed or shot from distance with a zoom lens. This will give us a very flat field of view. And because zoom lenses have a lot of elements inside of them, I just went at it and added as many circles as I wanted. Remember that you can also add a blur effect to each layer and change their colors to make them look more natural. The reason why I kept them all in separate layers was to animate them individually. But we cannot do that without a guide. Remember, all of these circles are aligned on the same line. So any change in perspective will need to follow this line to a certain degree. So the first thing I did was to enable keyframes for the reference line. And then I moved the pivot point to the center of the light source. And then I rotated it slightly and then back to the beginning. And after adjusting the animation, I enabled keyframes for each element. I moved them, keeping them centered on this line. Just remember to also change the pivot point before doing it. And another thing you can do is to make the layers blink, changing the opacity across the timeline. And another thing I haven't mentioned yet is that if there's any dirt or dust in the lens for any reason, this all will be reflected on the image. So you can add a top layer with dust particles, maybe drawn by hand or using the airbrush. You can also change the opacity of this layer, changing the blending mode to add glow. And another thing you can do is to create a vignette on top of everything. And you can do that by using the airbrush or the gradient tool because some lenses don't let light pass equally across the edges. 
and we are trying to emulate that effect of a low quality lens with third and chromatic aberrations, so it seems appropriate. Now, the reason why the lens flares are moving is not because of the light source itself, it's because of the camera. This is a static shot after all. So we can create a 2D camera folder, put all these layers inside of it, then go to Object Tool, select Show Camera Field of View to be able to visualize what the camera sees. And from here, we enable the keyframe from the second camera folder. So we can move the folder and make it match with the movement of the flares. And here's our finalized shot. Again, you can build upon this and make it more complex and modify it as you want. You can even use it on movie animations or use any type of shape you want for your lens flares, just like these ones. And that's about it. I hope you'll find this useful. You can find me by my name, Volta Base, at Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.